Forest Green currently find themselves bottom of the table in League One. They've sacked their manager and brought in Big Duncan Ferguson. You know what? I don't think that's going to be enough. I think Forest Green need Mr. Rebuild. So today we are rebuilding Forest Green, but with a twist. We can only sign players that we find from our youth academy. So here is the default starting 11 we have here with Forest Green Rovers. The players in this squad are the only real life players that we are allowed to have in this Forest Green side. Once they leave the team, they can no longer be used. But a bit of a problem for us, we only have 2 million pounds. It's expected. We're a bottom league one side. And our current youth scout, Jude Faulkner, is one star, one star. So we definitely need an upgrade if we want to find some half decent players. Unfortunately, like we could go for Jasper Jones, but he looks okay. I really want to get this Charlie Parry guy into the side though. So I'm going to try selling some older players to try financing this. But look, to be honest, I don't know if Jude Faulkner is going to bring us back anything, but I'm going to set up a scouting network for the first three months anyways, in the hope that he can bring us maybe one player that is half decent and can be in the starting 11. Jude, do us a solid. The first player out of the club, however, is our third string goalkeeper. It is Lewis Thomas headed to Salford City. That's an extra 240,000 pounds towards getting ourselves a new scout. This is really going to help. We have decided to sell the club captain center half, Jordan Moore Taylor to the German league, but that is 430,000 pounds extra. Well, the goalposts shifted, the scouts updated, and the best we can get right now, we can afford to get somebody. It's either a five star, four star, or a four star, five star. The question is though, do we hold on and try waiting for a refresh to get five star, five star scouts and keep selling players? I think I might do that, honestly. I'm going to hire this guy here, Ilpo Salmanen, 2.795, and then any finances we make up like above, we can go for a third scout or even an upgrade on Jude Faulkner. So we can't set up another scouting mission in England. So I'm deciding, I don't know why. Let's go find ourselves a Serbian player. I'm going to send Salman in there for six months to Serbia and see who we can find. I'm trying to build a very multicultural team here at Forest Green. The player departures continue on rolling through, lads. Bailey Cargill is off to the Irish League, off to Derry City for £420,000. So our first monthly scouting report has come back here from England. Jude Faulkner has only found us one prospect. He's an absolute dud. And Jude thinks he could be a left back, a right back, a right midfielder, a left midfielder, a left winger, a right winger, or a striker. Jude, you're a terrible scout. You know what? This is a waste of our time. Jude, can I fire you? No, not yet. You're going to last a couple more days. It was very naive of me to think that Jude Faulkner was going to do anything for us, being one star, one star. Jude, in the words of the great man himself, Vince McMahon, you're fired. Let the saving up for a new scout begin. My philosophy right now is basically anybody that's like 25 or over and has a decent overall of value is probably going to get sold. Ben Stevenson, the perfect example of this. I'm not going to show you every scouting report, but look at the difference in this scouting report compared to the other one. Like we've actually got some half decent prospects here that I'm going to sign up to the youth academy. It's only going to take two weeks for Zarko Jovanovic to go to a striker and he's only 52 rated. So I'm hoping that maybe him going to striker is the best for his overall. And I'm going to convert Milan Novak to a left midfielder. But this is what the starting 11 is looking like after the opening transfer window, of course. It's about to look so much more different once we're done with it. I just need our scout singular to come in clutch. We do have about 966,000 pounds, but in terms of new scout, I'm going to try selling some more players so that we can get ourselves the likes of Harley Wheatley or even Paul Connolly in a perfect scenario. All right, our two youth academy kids. I'm excited about Jovanovic. He can go to a strike. Let's see if that gets him up from 53. Damn it, early to a 54. All right, Milan Novak to a 49. Oh, all right, we're going to have to grow them on their own. We have found ourselves a young Serbian striker though, Bosko Nezovic. I'm interested to see how this guy grows. I'm going to leave him for the time being because he's not starting 11 ready, but he could be come January. I'm honestly not too bothered with what happens to us this year. I would argue that being promoted to the championship would be the worst possible case scenario because we want to have time in these lower divisions to help grow our youth academy products. So 10th right now, we're a little bit too close to the playoffs for my liking, but we're also not safe from relegation either. This is a super tight table. We are here in January though. I'm going to release a couple of players from the youth academy. Novak, I'm going to leave Jovanovic for the time being, but I'm going to promote Bosco Nezovic to the senior team. Our first signing as Forest Green manager. I'm willing to give him the keys to the castle as well. I want to see 
how good this kid could become. But for me, this January transfer window is all about getting the revenue raised to get ourselves a new scout for the second half of the season. Like to let you guys in on my mentality, I want all three of these slots to eventually have all five-star, five-star scouts. So we're just churning over talent and can really only select the cream of the crop. Like I want to get it to the point where the youth academy is full of players that are like overall already 60 plus and potential is like 84 to 94 everywhere where I can just be like, hey, look, found another superstar. Hey, look, found another superstar. And it's just a developmental factory. Already we've got clubs trying to sign Bosco Nezovic. Not a chance, Voluntari, not a chance. This is going to go so far towards us getting a world-class scout into the side. It is Jordan Garrick departing the club to FC Mitterlin for a club record 1.1 million pounds. In a traditional rebuild, I would be leaning on the Jamaican striker to really guide us up the divisions to start with. But for this, we need the money. And this is the end of the scouting report to Serbia. So our Serbian crop has been found. And so the transfer window has come and gone. We were unable to sell any more players. So I'm going to go ahead and spend 774,000 pounds on another Finnish striker. Another Finnish scout, I should say. And for the remainder of the season, we're going to set up a scouting network in Finland, may as well. And we're going to have our better scout head to England. Got to get an English crop of talent. Also from here on in, I'm not going to show you every time I sign a player to the Youth Academy or anything like that. I'm just going to show you every time I either set up a new scouting network or I promote somebody to the senior team. All right, we found a kid here. Kimo Liao. He's Leo. He's a Finnish center midfielder. He can play center mid, center defensive mid, center attacking mid. I'm going to promote him. His potential honestly could be anything. 65 to 89, but that overall has me in all sorts. Let's get him into the senior team. Going to convert him to play attacking midfield as well. So fingers and toes across. This can do well for us. Okay, Leo, what happens if we make him attacking midfielder? He, it's one overall growth. It's still a step in the right direction, I suppose. Left mid is a position where we are struggling. So I'm going to promote this kid, Luca Archer, to the senior team. Give him some game time for the remainder of the season. Oh God, we're in the playoffs. I swear, if we get ourselves promoted to the championship in a season where Forest Green are like nailed on to be relegated back to League Two, I might just laugh so hard I cry, to be honest. Ipswich and Barnsley have been automatically promoted though. And the clubs that are relegated are going to be Derby County. Jeez, Derby County's in the fourth division now. Shrewsbury, Port Vale, and Bristol Rovers. Wolves have won the FA Cup. Man United win the Carabao Cup. The Papa John's trophy was won by Bolton. I am actually relieved. We have been absolutely thumped by Bolton, 7-2 on aggregate, and we're not getting promoted. Bolton are the sides that do go on to get themselves promoted. Bakayoko was an absolute stud for us this year, though. 18 goals. Thing is, I'm trying to sell him, so hopefully we can get some money for him next year so that we can put that towards some more scouts. Not a great start to life, though, for Nezovic. He only gets himself one goal in eight appearances. We've got a large amount of 17-year-olds in our youth academy. I'm going to promote all of them to the senior team and then either start them next year, loan them out, or just sell them on for some money. Get a, like Every couple hundred thousand pounds really helps at the moment. You know what I'm going to do with this? This best guy actually looks like a stud. Frederick Best, yeah, welcome. Even players like Finley Bell and these types of guys that aren't really insane talents, I want to keep them in the club and not let them walk on freeze because that's still like 300,000 pounds or so we could be getting for these guys. And if I sell everybody that I just had contracts renewed for on permanent transfers, that's a five-star scout right there. Work smarter, not harder. So there we go, lads. Season one, done and dusted with Forest Green. Foundations laid. Let's see what season two has in store. So here we are at the start of season two and we have got a lot of work to do. I was not kidding you, lads, when I said I was going to transfer list a lot of players and loan list a lot of players. Our squad's going to look completely different at the end of this year. But we do start this season with four million pounds, which is nice because that's going to allow us to go straight in and hire another scout. I'm hoping there's a five star. No, there's no five star, five stars. I might hold on and wait until the next opportunity to get ourselves hopefully a five star, five star because we should be able to afford one. The first player of departure of the season has come through though and it is a big one. Jamie Robson is headed to Swansea City. We get ourselves 960,000 pounds in return. There we go, lads. We've got a five star, five star scout available. Nico Hogg, five star, five star Norwegian scout, 3.4 million pounds. It's expensive now, but I'm hoping the talent that he finds makes up for it. Welcome, Nico. Next goal is to get an upgrade on Patola. I really want to loan out a lot of the young talent that we did bring in from the Youth Academy last year, though. The first of whom is going to 
be Jamie Thorne off to Rotherham for two years. Another young player loaned out, it's Teddy Coleman off to the German leagues for two years. Luca Archer, another player off to Bronby for two years. I'm genuinely so curious to see which of these players come back as decent prospects and which of them we just have to sell. There is serious potential though for us to build the greatest team in rebuild history if we manage these players correctly. Someone I'm definitely not selling though for the time being is Frederick Best, the 16 year old who already has a fully developed beard. This kid is built different. We're having absolutely no issue learning out the players we want to loan out. I just want us to be able to sell some players on a permanent though so we can get some money in. Finally got a player sold here. It's Armani Little who is headed to the Turkish league here. That's another 600,000 pounds in our transfer budget. This is the perfect example of what I was talking about last year. Tyrese Omotoy could have let him walk on a free. He's nothing insane at the moment, but I've decided to renew his contract and then sell him on to St. Pat's and we get a quarter of a million pounds in return, which is hopefully going to add up and help us get a five-star scout. And we have officially got all of the required players out on loans for two years. Also managed to sell another player here, Dylan McGow off the Turkish League. In the meantime, though, we're going to get some scouting network set up. Let's see if we can find some Brazilian talent here. I really want us to be an international club, so we're going to go to Germany here for our second scouting expedition. But I'm going to hold off on... In fact, I'm going to fire Patola here. It's going to cost us £30,000, but it is what it is. I want to get ourselves another five-star, five-star scout. Right now, we're about one million, a million and a half away from doing that. A backup goalkeeper departure here. I have noticed one position we're really struggling to find youth academy players in is goalkeeper. So I honestly might set up a short-term scouting expedition with our next scout, purely focused on goalkeepers. This here may just be the move that gets us over the line and able to afford another five-star, five-star scout. Regan Hendry off to Bristol City for 1.1 million pounds. No, we don't even have an offer for a five-star, five-star. We might be able to once we get it though. We'll come back in a second. Really happy about this one, fellas. Amadou Bakayoko off to Ulsan Hyundai, 1.1 million pounds. And Matthew Stevens out of the club for 1.25 million pounds. No top tier strikers here anymore, which means yes, Bosco Nezovic right now for the start of the season. The striker role is yours, my friend. Sorry, Charlie. The center midfield role is not yours. Ah, oh, still no offers for five star, five star scouts. We're gonna have to be patient, but we will definitely be able to afford one when we get the opportunity. But there we go, lads. This is what the starting 11 is looking like right now. We really need ourselves a right winger though from the youth academy to come in and complete the starting 11 because right now we have a backup striker playing there. Big season of growth. Fingers crossed though for the players in the starting 11. Very excited to see how the lads on loan perform as well. Finally found ourselves a five-star, five-star scout. Vasily Koloskov, a Russian scout. Welcome. I'm going to set up a scouting network for a goalkeeper, a short-term one. And you know what, lads? This may be biased from my behalf, but I feel like Australia always has world-class goalkeepers. We're underratedly solid when it comes to short stoppers. So I want to see if I can blood the next generation of Australian keeper. Let's go get ourselves the next Mark Schwarzer, the next Matty Ryan. Found a kid from our Brazilian expedition that I want to get into the squad immediately. Gabriel Neves, 67 rated Brazilian left back, 77 to 99 potential. I'm hoping he falls further on the 99 side of the spectrum, but we're going to take the risk immediately making him our new starting left back. You can probably tell from the potentials in this squad, but if your potential range isn't unbelievable right now, I am not signing you to the youth academy. We've got too many scouts coming in to me be signing players that have like 80 potential. I'm going like 85 to 99 is all I want right now. Our scouting mission to Australia was an absolute failure except for this one player. We found one decent goalkeeper in three months and it's this guy Ryan Hobbs, an Australian 17 year old goalkeeper, 74 to 99 potential. So again, I've only just got him in the academy so it's hard to know a range. Like you look at players like Oliver who have been in here for a year and it's starting to narrow it down between 83 and 89. But Hobbs, we don't know if he's going to be a stud or not. I'm going to promote him though to the senior team and give him as best chance possible. Yeah, look, this was always a risk taking the strategy that we have. We sold off a lot of our good players in attempt of trying to grow the young players in our squad. And it's taken us from the playoffs to last in league one. It's okay because I knew this process was going to take a long time. We're in the relegation zone. We're coming dead last in league one. I'm keeping on track with the current mission. I don't care if we get relegated. I just want to grow an incredible young core of talent at Forest Green because I think we might have long-term or short-term pain rather of getting relegated, but long-term, it's going to be the best thing for us. A 
at least that's what I'm telling myself. We do know that the right wing position is somewhere where we struggle. This Miguel Cardoso guy that I found in Brazil, he's a left midfielder, but I'm changing him to a right winger. We're going to promote him to right wing. He stays at 62, but we're going to come out here and promote him to the senior team. But I want to give the young Australian goalkeeper Hobbs the best chance of success possible. Hence, we have sold Ross Duhan to the Belgian league here. It is time though to set up our scouting networks for the remainder of the season. I'm going to send Koloskov here to Scotland. Following their World Cup success, I'm going to send Salmanen to Morocco. And Nico Hogg, I'm going to give you a little trip home for the rest of the season. See the wife, see the kids, and find us some Norwegian talent. Starting to run out of spots in the Youth Academy though, so I'm going to promote all of the 17-year-olds. I've been culling the list here and there of our Youth Academy behind the scenes, but if you get to 17 and you're basically 60 overall or higher, I will promote you to the senior team. That is my rule at least. Oh dear lads, we had a much improved second half of the season, but we have still been relegated. We finish just one point from safety and have been relegated down to the fourth division. The silver lining is that it's going to give our young players an absolute belter of an opportunity to just stat pad, fingers crossed. That's what I'm hoping, but it's still never nice getting relegated. Peterborough and Blackpool have been promoted automatically to the championship though. Man City win the FA Cup. West Ham win the Carabao Cup. The silver lining about getting relegated is we have more time to push for a Papa John's trophy win. I don't think we've ever won the Papa John's trophy in rebuild history. And it's Plymouth Argyle getting promoted via the playoffs. Pie face would be a very happy man. This is why I wanted to give Bosko Nezovic a solid season though. The Serbian striker has bagged himself 17 goals and has basically been the only man besides O'Brien, who was our backup striker, to get himself on the scorer sheet. 17 goals plus six growth to a 68. He is surely going to tear it up in the fourth division. I want to see how much growth the players we loaned out got, see if any of them are decent talents. Thorne's gone up plus seven to a 66. Coleman plus four to a 63. Butcher up to a 58. Archer up to a 65. This guy up to a 65. And Oliver up to a 65. We're getting a nice young core of talent here. And all six of them still have another year on their loan moves to go, which is very exciting. I am going to renew the contract though of Sean Robertson, but I'm going to let the contract of Alfie Burnett expire. He's 56 rated. We can get a better goalkeeper than that in the Youth Academy. Speaking of the Youth Academy, I'm going to promote a whole new class of talent. I've culled it a lot and we're going to promote Anwar Said here, Ilias Hassan, a lot of Moroccan talent coming through. Aiden Cameron joining us here. I'm going to let Ian Wright, I laughed when I signed this guy from Scotland. We've got Ian Wright into the team. You know what? I'm going to promote Duarte as well because he's in a center back role that we really need. It's really hard getting strong center backs in free A or youth academies. So I'm going to look to load him out next year. All right, I'm making a big call at the start of the season. It might be risky, but I'm actually going to fire our four star, five star scout when he gets, all right, give me a day. All right, there we go. Salomon, I'm going to fire him in the hopes of getting our third and final five star, five star scout, which we can do. It's a Scotsman. Lewis Graham is our final five star scout. Now we have no excuses not to be signing the world's best talent. I'm about to get so selective here. I'm only signing players on because we've already got a nice core. Like we've got players that we're loading out, developing, putting in the starting 11. I'm only signing players to the starting squad or even youth academy to begin with. If you look like the next Messi. All right, let's go get ourselves some American talent here. Gonna go scout. Gonna, oh, is it risky sending a Russian to scout in the United States? Screw it. Let's do it anyways. We're sending Vasily Koliskov to the US of A. I'm gonna send Lewis Graham to Argentina for six months. And Nico Hag, we're gonna send him. Let's go to... I'm gonna go to Croatia. This might break a record this season for the most amount of players on a loan list. So we have this German defensive midfielder, Christopher Hansen, who I did sign from the Youth Academy last year. And I realized this dude would make a really decent center back. So we're gonna convert him. He goes up to a 66 and he is now going to be our new starting center back. Let the madness begin. The first player loaned out is going to be Kleber Duarte off to Al Shabab for two years. Man's gonna grow by marking Cristiano Ronaldo in that Saudi league. That is a good baptism of fire. Finn Schmidt is off to Vizela in the Portuguese league or is it the Italian league? I always get that mixed up. I'm gonna say Portuguese league. You know what? That's annoying me because I know I've been wrong about that before. Okay, they're Portuguese. I was right. We're chilling. Two player transfers here. The first is gonna be for our former starting left back, Kyle McAllister, who is off to the French league. And it's not showing his pitcher, but O'Brien, the Irish backup striker, is off to Morecambe. All the players in our youth academy have now hit 16. So I'm actually gonna promote all of them to the senior team 
team as well. See if they can get some growth. Fatih Sayed is who I'm really excited about though. 97 potential, 62 overall Moroccan. He's not good enough for the starting 11 right now, but if we can get him some growth, he could, like, he's literally our only right back prospect. So I want him to do well. The lone action continues though. Christopher Olsen off to Antanlia Sport. What have I just, my tongue has just had a stroke. He looks half decent. I'm going to promote Gavin Gibbs to the squad. We desperately need a backup goalkeeper. We literally don't have another backup goalkeeper besides Hobbs. So Hobbs goes down. Gibbs is our man. I'm also going to promote this kid here, Adrian Diaz. Like I said, I'm only promoting guys that are ready for right now. I'm going to promote him and hopefully get him a move as well. We might have to be a little bit more selective about who we select though, because I'm pretty sure our squad is completely full now. So the barrier to get out of the youth academy now just became that, that little bit harder to be honest. Ian Wright is on loan, not to Arsenal, not to Crystal Palace, but to Trez. We have had a permanent departure here though. Finley Bell off to Finn Harps on a permanent transfer. And also Dominic Bernard is off to Heidenheim. I don't want anybody getting in, in front of us getting some center back growth. I have decided that I'm not gonna show you every loan offer as it unfolds. I'll just show you a roundup at the end of the season. Otherwise this video is gonna be the same thing, just loaning out 40 bloody players and it'll go for like seven hours, which some of you guys might like, but I think that might drag on a little. Reese Brown has been an absolute stud for us so far in this video, but we're in league two now. We don't need a 28 year old center midfielder. I'd rather take light step back in terms of overall, but give one of our young players an opportunity to develop in that center midfield role. So Reese Brown, thank you, but you're headed to Dusseldorf. So there we go, lads, some big loans under our belt. We've had some players leave and we're gonna hopefully be a lot better for it in the future. Although there's still so many players I wanted to loan out that we couldn't get over the line. Regardless though, this is how the starting 11 is looking here in League 2. Surely we're about to absolutely walk the league this year. I hope we do. I hope we get 700 goals for Nezovic, 1,000 assists for Leo. I hope we walk the league and our dynamic player potential for the players just goes through the bloody roof. Also, I love how our squad reserves, like we've only got six players in reserves, but we literally have like 20 players out on loan. We're basically the League 2 version of Chelsea, except we actually grow most of our players. This is exactly what we wanted to see here on the 1st of January, lads. Forest Green, top of the league. We're only three points ahead of Accrington, but we're top of the league nonetheless, looking to get ourselves promoted back to the third division and do it in style. Got to get this kid promoted though. 99 potential from Dusan Kovacevic. He's Croatian. He looks like the reincarnation of Vardiol and Vardiol hasn't even retired. 65 overall. Like I said, I'm only going for the creme de la creme right now. Promoting this dude without a shadow of a doubt. But the goal here in January has to be getting as many players as possible again. Loaned out. We had ourselves a fairly busy January transfer window in terms of loans. We ended up getting six players out on loans and I find it quite humorous. Our six foot seven German center back, Emil Hartmann, we sent him up two divisions to Sheffield United. He can't get a start in League Two, but he's gonna get a start in the championship at Sheffield United. I hope so. Big second half of the season though. Let's get ourselves back up to the third division and get some good stats on the way. Bouncing right back up to the third division, lads. Only six losses all year and we end up finishing two points away from a centurion season with Forest Green. That is gonna help us quite a lot moving forward. Derby County will be joining us and so will AFC Wilmington. I forgot there was three teams going up automatically in the second division, but there's the bottom of the table. Chelsea take down Norwich to win the FA Cup. Liverpool win the Carabao. Tranmere have won the Papa John's. I'm putting it so high up our priority list next year to win the Papa John's trophy. And it will be Lincoln City joining us in the third division next year. Big year there for Bosco Nezovic, plus four growth. And he is now 20 goals more to his career tally. Best up to a 73 and 14. McCann surprisingly in there despite being a bench player. I'm really happy though to see Nezovic doing quite well. All right, time to see who if anybody in the youth academy or anybody I should say that was in a loan move had some insane growth. I'm hoping so. Yeah, Hartman up a plus six. Oliver, yeah, the lads are doing quite well. In half a year, Kovacevic has gone up plus six. I think we've found an absolute future star. Plus five for Hartman at Sheffield United. Our team's coming along bloody brilliantly. Plus six for Fatty Said. Car value up to a 70. Archer a 67. Santos a 71. I am excited. Hassan up to a 70. I think I might just make every rebuild in the future. Youth Academy. Cameron went up plus 10.
Ben, this is cooked. I think I'm going to do only Youth Academy in the future. This is so underrated. Plus seven for Olsen, plus five for Lancaster. This is ridiculous. We have seriously turned the corner in this rebuild. Bring on season four and bring on the next chapter at Forest Green. So this year, I'm going to be getting scout reports set up. And I'm literally going to scout one area for the full year or nine months at least. And my goal is to only promote one or two players from the Youth Academy this year. If I have to let some decent talent go, that's cool. I literally want players that are going to be the best of their generation. We have that luxury now. We're getting really good. We have the luxury to be super cutthroat and say no to a lot of talent. So we've got a scouting network set up in England, Italy, and I'm going to head to Africa for the final one. We're going to scout in Nigeria. I am going to promote Kanunan to the starting lineup, and I'm going to convert him to a center midfielder this year. Adrian Diaz had some decent growth last year, but I've added him to the loan list. He was strong for us, but we could do better. Not many players in this squad remaining that I'm actually going to be selling on permanent transfers, but one of the final ones, Jacob Jones off to Hartlepool here for 230,000 pounds. Even Barcelona have identified we've got some absolute studs on our hands. Jamie Thorne, Barcelona are calling, but he's staying at Forest Green, staying at the new Lawn Stadium instead of the Camp Nou. Another player departure here, getting rid of the final nobodies from our initial squad. It is going to be 58 rated Harvey Bunker off to Harrogate Town. I really want to give Fatih Syed that starting right back position. Corey O'Keefe has been an absolute stud for us across the first three and a half seasons, but we have decided to part ways with him. It's time for the new model, Corey O'Keefe off to Alaves. Did we only loan out four players? It felt like we loaned out like eight or nine. Regardless, we've loaned out some players. That really took me by surprise. But here is our starting 11 as we head into League One. We've got a few players. Our Finnish guys are already, they're already getting international call-ups. Same with Charlie Savage. Our midfield is so good that everybody's getting selected for their nations. But I'm really excited to see what we can do here in the third division. Can we have back-to-back -back promotions? We are well and truly in the hunt here for the promotion, automatic promotion as well. Bolton breathing down our necks. I need to point out, Derby County got relegated to League Two. They came up to League One with us and they might be coming up to the championship. Derby County doing a bit of a rebuild as well. This is what the Youth Academy is looking like right now. Like all the potentials are brilliant, but the overalls just aren't great enough if I'm being honest. This Lino Masato guy is probably the only one I'm gonna promote right now. I don't know, man. They need to like Lawrence, these guys, 61 rated guys need to kind of pick it up a little bit. Our expectations are super high. One player I do really want to loan move for is Arthur Lancaster though. Him and Nezovic are fighting it out for the starting striker spot. Both 19 years of age, both 73 overall. I want one of them to get a loan move. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna add Nezovic to the loan list as well. Whoever we can get out on loan first, the better. Cause I want them both to grow. Wrong person to come in for an offer for. I don't want Ryan Hobbs going anywhere. This Jimmy Oliver guy, you are bold my friend. I literally accepted a loan offer for him and he rejected it. He, this dude had the nut to reject the loan offer to New York City FC and then come to me saying, I think that you're gonna need a new left back. Make that man me. Jimmy Oliver, my brother in Christ. Do you see the prospects ahead of you? Gabriel Neves is 76 rated. Benjamin Hartman, 74 rated. Bro, you're 64 rated. Take the loan move. He's not a player I was desperate to loan out, but I'm still happy to see Lino Masado is headed on a two year loan move. There we go. We got a loan offer for Arthur Lancaster to go play for Eintracht Frankfurt, which is hilarious. My dude can't even get a start in league one, but he's about to go to like a top 10 team in the German Bundesliga. And there we go, lads. Arthur Lancaster off to Frankfurt for two years. Go get him, big fella. Luke Butcher off to Darmstadt. Honestly, if he doesn't come back well improved, I might let him walk. Get in there, lads. It's not only back-to-back -back promotions, but it is back-to-back -back titles. We have won EFL League One, and we are headed up to the championship with a forest green side that has momentum and also time on its side. Reading will be joining us in the second division next year. The sides headed down are going to be Morecambe, Wimbledon, Wickham, and Bristol Rovers. Wolves did go on to win the FA Cup. We actually made it to the round of 32 where we were beaten by Fulham on penalties, which on one hand I like because I'm a Fulham fan, and on one hand I hate because obviously we're Forest Green's manager. Liverpool have won the Carabao Cup. Fair play to Leighton Orient though, who made it to the semi-finals despite being in League Two. Shrewsbury did win the Papa John's Trophy, and I can confirm Shrewsbury were the side that eliminated us in the round of 16. That hurts the soul. And Derby County's rise alongside 
hurt us will continue. They have won the playoffs. Surprising here. Vilami Hamelainen off the bench is our top goal scorer for the year. 18 goals for the Finnish attacking midfielder. We might have to play him at striker because quite clearly the man can finish. Wow, wow, wow. Kind of a disappointing season though for Bosco Nezovic. Only one overall growth and 14 goals. So I'm actually going to start this season by recalling Arthur Lancaster from his loan move at Frankfurt because he's 75 rated and Bosco Nezovic is 73. I think it's Lancaster's job to lose now. Let's try getting a loan for Nezovic. Also, we do have this Christopher Olsen guy, but it's going to take him ages to convert to a striker and there's really nowhere else. Like, it's like 89 weeks for him to go to a striker, 22 to go to attacking midfield. So I'm going to look to get him on loan as well. For this season though, I'm going to take a little look in Asia. Let's go for a Japanese player, head back to South America. I might go Colombia. Let's, let's go Colombia for the year. And the final scout, Nico Hogg, is headed to France. And since it is the start of the season, I'm going to promote these three players. John Amos from Nigeria, Blagoj, I'm going to say Blagoj Jovanovic from Croatia, and Zarko Maric as well from Croatia. I'm also going to recall the Croatian centre-half, Dusan Kovacevic, from his loan move in the Portuguese league. I think he'll be a great addition to the back line for this year. Going to throw up Viljo Oliver, who was our starting centre-half to go out on loan in his replacement. We have had so many players loaned out in this window though. Again, just continuing to give the guys that aren't first team ready an opportunity to get some growth under their belt. Nezovic off to Porto. The main players we wanted to get rid of this year. Oliver, also his teammate at Porto. Olsen gone to Torino. So this is what the starting 11 is now looking like ahead of the championship season. I'm currently converting Carvalho. You know what? I might just put Carvalho in there. Yeah, he, he goes up eight sharpness. Oh, my God. I'm trying to convert Carvalho into a center midfielder because he's grown like an absolute machine. Hopefully we can push for promotion to the Premier League, but to be honest, I'll just be happy surviving in the championship. Let's go. Our intuition was correct and we are on with a serious chance here of getting promoted, at least getting in the playoffs. I mean, we're only three points behind Brentford in second, so we are a serious chance of getting ourselves up to the Premier League with Forest Green, although there is a lot of competition as we head further down the table. I I need to sort out some contracts. Oh my God, we have so many players coming off contract at the end of this season. I've got to say across all three nations though, our scouts have not been delivering many quality players in the first half of this season. As we know, we have been training Alex Carvalho to become a center midfielder. It's now time to, oh my God. You guys saw that in real time. Alex Carvalho has gone up from a 78 to an 85 purely from just going from center defensive midfielder to center midfielder. Okay, that's made me really want to change a lot of players positions to see if lightning strikes twice. I want to change Frederick Best to an attacking midfielder, but it says it's going to take 66 weeks. Oh, because we've got so many good like left wingers and left midfielders. I really want to give, where is he here? Anwar Siad some game time. I want to give Miguel Santos some game time. Can I convert any of these guys to attacking midfielder? Because that's the position right now. Yeah, 86 weeks. That's the position where we're really struggling. Kimo Leo playing there right now, but he's only 73, not going up. We've got Ilyas Hassan, who's still alone at Lanty. United, but we don't really have any superstar options there. It's only going to take 19 weeks for Ian Wright to convert there, although he's only one overall high. I'm going to try converting him to an attacking midfielder and see if that works. If not, if the experiment fails in the second half of this season, at least we know Ilyas Hassan is coming back next year. Ian Wright's already gone from a 73 to a 75 in this plan in the past 19 weeks. I am praying. Ian Wright, please do exactly what Carvalho did. God damn it. Lightning doesn't strike twice. He stays at a 70 but it's still a step in the right direction. It's going to take us a hot minute, but I'm going to give Frederick Best to go at attacking midfield. So we've had a slight little slip here in the second half of the season. We still only finished three points away from automatic promotion, but we are going to be battling it out in the playoffs. It's either going to be ourselves, West Brom, Forest, or Sheffield United getting up to the Premier League. And I think we all know who I want it to be, but we are going to be facing Nottingham Forest in the playoff semifinals. We need Carvalho to step up for us. Dude's an 
an absolute stud. Our team is now looking in most parts of the field good enough to be in the Premier League. Let's be real. Come on. A big game necessary here against Nottingham Forest in the first round of the semi-finals and we're 3-2 behind. Nah, surely not. We're chasing a result here. We need to win this game. Otherwise, we're eliminated in the semi-finals of the playoffs, which would be a massive L. Taking on Nottingham Forest and it's a two-all draw. We're out in the semi-finals. Nottingham Forest sent themselves through in the 88th minute. That hurts the soul. And ultimately, Nottingham Forest are going to be in the championship with us next season. Sixth place. Sheffield United shock the world and get themselves back up to the Premier League. Taking a look around the grounds, though, Chelsea have thumped Southampton to win the FA Cup. Leicester City win the Carabao Cup. And in the championship relegation battle, it's Derby County, Coventry City, and Ipswich going down. Big year, though, for Arthur Lancaster. 26 goals to his name. Plus four growth. I think we made the right call getting him in the squad. I still can't believe the season Alex Carvalho had, though. Plus 11 growth. That conversion to center midfield, purely going from CDM to center midfield, is, is pretty extraordinary. Also, taking a look at how the players on loan went. John Amos. I'm definitely doing Youth Academy rebuilds more often. John Amos has gone off 11 overall in one year. This is one of the weirdest videos I've ever made. Unfortunately, Jimmy Oliver can't get the same result. Another Oliver, plus five growth. This is insane. Archer, plus three. Lino Masato could be a starting 11 midfielder for us. He's up to an 82 overall now. Butcher up to a 71. He might have just extended his career for sure. Plus three there. Who else do we have out on loan? We've got Olsen up to an 80. And unfortunately, Bosco Nezovic is falling behind the rest of the pack. Just plus one. Seeing the growth of some of these players, though, I can already see the comment section. I can already see the accusations of cheating. You love to see it. That's a compliment. I am going to let the contract, though, of Murphy Bennett expire. 57 rated center back, 22 years of age. Not too bothered about money from selling him. Just going to let him walk on a free. The team we're going to have next year, though, is going to be absolutely unbelievable. There is no excuse for us to not get promoted to the Premier League. Surely. Come on now. This starting 11 is unbelievable, especially for the championship. We've got a midfield combo of an 86 rated Brazilian and an 82 rated rated Argentine. Our back line's getting strong. I've decided to put Hartman at left back. I'm going to convert him to a right back though. But just because we're looking good doesn't mean I don't want to loan out any more players. There is still so much work to do in terms of loaning and growth if we want to build the greatest team in rebuild history. My God. Carvalho! Juventus want to offer 111 million pounds for him. That is not happening, number one. I'm blocking offers for him. But even if we had that money, we couldn't really use use it for anything. Money is irrelevant for us now. And I think that's a beautiful thing. I mean, like realistically, if I sold our whole team, we could have like a billion pounds, I reckon, over that. I reckon we'd have like two billion pounds if I sold the team, but that ain't happening. Colombia, Japan, and France only found two players. Both of them were Colombians. So I'm going to promote both of them to the senior team and see if we can get some loan moves for them. We're at the point now where if players aren't cutting it, I might just let them walk on a free transfer. Like we saw at the end of last season with that old center back. Got ourselves a two-year loan move to Nottingham Forest for Ian Wright. I'm hoping he can come back an absolute superstar. As you saw, I plan on loaning out a lot of players. And if I can get them on like decent loan moves and they can come back in a year or two and they are well beaters, we could honestly go from championship to Champions League really fast. Officially converted Benjamin Hartman from a left back to a right back. 78, stays at a 78. Let's see if he can get a good season under his belt though. So for our scouting operations this year, I'm going to send Vasily. Billy Koloskov to Saudi Arabia. Lewis Graham's going to New Zealand. And Nico Hogg can go to Wales. But I'm setting myself a new rule for this season. I'm not letting anybody even enter our youth academy if they don't have 90 plus potential. We've got excess in just about every position. So I only want the best of the best. I feel like I've said that multiple times, but I've gone from like accepting like 83 rated potential to like 85. Now it's like 90 or nothing. So many players loaned out again this season. And if we can get to the point where basically our entire squad is 80 rated plus in every single position, that's like a dream to me. I mean, our starting 11 is almost all 80 plus. Surely, surely we get ourselves out of the championship this season and up to the Premier League. We have to. Our team is looking so good. Second in the championship on course, hopefully for the Premier League, but the job is not done. Leeds United in a very comfortable position, seven points clear. But again, we've got a lot of competition breathing down our necks. We need to make sure we are 
lock in here for the second half of the season. Really interested to see if Hassan can turn into a quality player. I mean, he's already decently rated, but the Moroccan attacking midfielder is going to spend six months at Bayern Munich. Frederick Best, surely, but slowly getting to an attacking midfield role. Oh my, is he going to get there before the end of the season? Get in there. The journey is finally going up another gear. We are headed to the Premier League with Forest Green Rovers. Only six losses all year, 98 points, only beaten by a very impressive Leeds United side who get themselves 109 points, 109 goals, and only three losses. So fair play to them, but we're headed to the Prem and that's all that matters. Bournemouth, Norwich, Forest, and Blackburn fighting it out for that final spot. And as we scroll down the championship table, the sides heading who are going to be two divisions above next year are Rotherham, Barnsley, and Wigan. Manchester United have won the FA Cup. Liverpool win a hotly contested Carabao Cup final. It will be Bournemouth who are joining us in the Premier League next season. Anwar said, comes back from his loan move. We put him right in at the left wing position. Not only has he gone up six overall to an 85 overall at 22 years of age, man's bagged himself 28 goals and 10 assists, meaning his dynamic play potential, it is about to be a bit stupid, to be honest. Carvalho is up to an 89. Oh, this team, man, this team. Lancaster, only 11 goals for his season, but three overall growth. Need to watch that one, though. Also, it's literally coming at the final week of the season, but Frederick Best can finally be an attacking midfielder. Please go crazy. Please. God damn it, he stays at an 81. It is what it is. He's now officially an attacking midfielder. That opens the door to see if anybody else can take that position. Going to be saying goodbye to a few more of our initial starting 11 players or starting squad players. Robertson, McCann, and Goodwin Malif all leaving on freeze. The journey has felt chaotic and sometimes quite hopeless, but here we go. Premier League bound with Forest Green Rovers using only youth academy players. You love to see it. Christopher Olsen has come back from his loan spell at Torino. He's 85 rated. It's going to take about half a year for him to be converted to an attacking midfielder. So I think let's do it. Why not? He's 85 rated. Let's make Christopher Olsen our new attacking midfield savior. John Amos has come back though and he's 79 rated. He could give some real competition here to Ryan Hobbs. I might try getting him another loan move. I know I said earlier I wanted to find the next Mark Schwarzer, and I think Fulham do as well. Fulham have come in for Ryan Hobbs. That would be really nice for my soul, considering Mark Schwartz is my favorite player of all time, but I'd rather have him on our team. Also, I've got to say, it looks so nice seeing the Premier League logos on the arms there. That is, that's a nice touch. Gonna have a loan move here for really one of the only players that needs it quite a lot. One of our only remaining players still in the 60s, it's Jovanovic off to Pisa. Little loan move here for Adrian Diaz as well, off to Espanyol for two years. I'm not gonna lie, I had much higher hopes for that guy. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, he's still a really solid prospect, but I thought he was gonna be like a player that hit the 90s, like we've had with Carvalho. Hopefully this two year move though can kind of get that process going. But to be totally honest, there's not much more business I wanted to do this window. We're in the Premier League finally, and this is the team we have to hopefully survive relegation here in season number seven. Let's be so for real though, like let's be for real. There is surely no chance we're in the relegation battle. Our team is way too good to be in a relegation. We literally have a 90 rated midfielder. Like our lowest rated player in the offense is 83 rated. If we're in the relegation battle, I am going to be absolutely shocked. I can live with this so far. I mean, the table is extremely congested. We sit ninth on 30 points, but we lose a game. We drop down to 13th. We win a game. We go jump up the sixth. Like this second half of the season could really hold anything. And it just depends on how the lads progress and perform. Christopher Olsen, finally a, an attacking midfielder, staying at an 85, but hopefully this can really get, he's rapid, 97 pace. I really don't want Ilyas Hassan to waste his career though on the bench with us. I'm gonna send him out on another loan move here. It's a two year loan move to AC Milan. He's 82 rated right now. Hopefully this can turn him into a superstar. And our German center half, Christopher Hansen is off to Liverpool for the remaining six months. Here we are at the second half of the season, the end of the season, we haven't changed. We've stayed ninth. There was so much room to go up the table and so much room to fall down the table. And we've stayed in ninth position, 54 points. But I'm just happy we survived relegation. I know it was a long shot, but I still just had that little feeling in the back of my mind that we could have been in trouble, but we survived. Scrolling up the table though, and the champions are Manchester City. And in the relegation zone on 34 points, that's a tight relegation battle, but it's Palace, Watford, and Brentford all getting relegated. Tottenham have won the FA.
FA Cup. I really want us to start going deep in the FA Cup. We did make it to the quarterfinals this year. And Chelsea won the Carabao Cup. How'd we go in that tournament? Not as well. We lost to Spurs. For the first time in today's rebuild, we're checking out the Champions League and other European football. PSG did win the Champions League. Arsenal take down Roma to win the Europa League. And it is FC Basel taking down Aberdeen to win the Conference League. Rightio. And Wasiad has come out of nowhere and has turned into a superstar. 89 rated. Could make a conversation right now that he is the best player in Moroccan football history. He gets himself 18 goals, 4 assists. Jamie Thorne getting himself 15. Lancaster, despite growing 5 overall, only bags 10 goals. But hopefully these stats increase next year. Frederick Best has come to us saying he wants to leave the club. But honestly, I'm going to be petty. We don't need the money. I think keeping Frederick Best, although it might send him insane and might be bad to his career, he's 85 rated at age 22. Even if he doesn't grow a single statistic for the remainder of his career, he's still a great option to have in this squad. So sorry, Frederick, you're a prisoner at the club. First loan move of the season is going to be for the Croatian winger Zarko Maric, who is off to Leeds for the year. Ian Wright loaned out once again this year off to Leon, And I've decided to give our goalkeeper, like our four string goalkeeper Gibbs, a bit of a lifeline. I said I was never going to loan this guy out, but I've decided let's give him a Euro 8 Hamburg just to keep him a little happy. Finn Schmidt, another loan move for him off to Southampton. And this really is a make or break loan move for Luca Archer. He's 72 rated, age 22. He needs some good growth if he's any chance of being even involved in any games at this team. But this is how the team looks this year, surely. Maybe our defense like Kovacevic and Oliver need a little bit more growth, even Hartman, but this midfield and attack, surely we've got to find ourselves in the conversation for European football. One thing I have noticed though, since converting Olsen to an attacking midfielder, we're really struggling for a backup striker. Nezovic, 74 rated. I might go find, like go on a scouting expedition to hopefully find a new young striker as a backup. Although what I want to do is see if any of these players that aren't starting or even reserve players for us have the ability to get themselves to a striker like Miguel Cardosa, no. 675 weeks, no. Ooh, okay. He's only one overall higher, but I'm going to try Vilami Hamelainen, our Finnish attacking midfielder. Only going to take him four weeks to become a striker. Let's convert him. It would be nice if doing this gets him up any overall. It doesn't, but he's still a decent backup option. Nah, we're sitting ninth, which is respectable, but look at all those draws. We've had 10 draws. Double the amount of draws that we've had wins. We're sitting on 25 points. The top five, it's 10 points away. If we convert these draws into wins in the second half of the season, then we might be a chance. But bloody hell, we need to pull the finger out. Also, lads, I'm not too happy with how the backup striker role is going. 75 is okay, but I really want us to get somebody that is going to be just like an absolute stud for us as a backup. So I'm going to put all of our resources into finding a new attacker all across the world. So we had one guy go to England, going to send another to Belgium, going to go attacker. Although I'm kind of worried that might get us a winger, but regardless, let's go try getting ourselves a Brazilian striker as well and see how we go. Again, unless they're an absolute world beater, you guys are going to see them. Like we literally have nobody in our youth academy right now because nobody has blown me away. So I found these two guys who look like absolute studs, Francisco Santos and Jin Jansen. The thing is though, one's an attacking midfielder, one's a right midfielder. I don't care where they're preferred. I'm training them both to become strikers. It's going to take a hot minute, like a hundred weeks for Santos and then 58 for Jean Jansen. So if it works, it works. If it doesn't, whatever. Both these guys have come to us saying they want out if they don't get promoted. It makes sense for Jansen. He's 18 years old. I'm just going to promote both of them, see how they go as a striker. And if they don't perform, then I'll just release them. We've gone up one spot, but man, 17 draws is ridiculous. We had the most draws in the Premier League. But the thing is, we had the same amount of losses as second place. And we had less losses than Spurs, Liverpool, Newcastle. Like that is ridiculous. We should be top four, but instead we finish eighth and probably not even with European football. Maybe Conference League if we're lucky. Scrolling down though, the relegated side is going to be full on Burnley and Norwich. We do have European football. Okay, it's not Champions League. Ake up. Man City, we stopped Man City from doing a domestic treble because they won the Premier League and the Carabao Cup. The Champions League goes to PSG. Borussia Mönchengladbach win the Europa League. I'm very interested to see how we go in that tournament. And it is Wolves winning the Conference League. Fair play. Anwar said 19 goals for the Moroccan winger. This dude is an absolute stud. 17 for Arthur Lancaster. Little worried 
worried though, lads. Some of our players that we sent out on loan haven't gotten any growth. Hassan's gone up plus two, which is nice. No growth for Schmidt, plus three for Marich. No growth for Gavin Gibbs. I might let him go, honestly. None for Archer, none for Diaz. This is really concerning. I am going to be letting a couple of players walk on freeze though. 24 years of age, 73 overall. 22 years of age, 67 overall. This doesn't meet our standards. So Oliver and Kimo Leo, two of our Finnish young starters are gone. I'm actually really happy with how the team is looking right now. And especially like the reserves are coming strong. We've got mad numbers here. So let's see what we can do with an almost full squad of players returned this season. The only player we've still got out on loan is Ilyas Hassan, but I'm almost tempted to bring him back as a backup attacking midfield option. But we have got a fairly reasonable group here in the Europa League. Of course, Lazio are a decent opponent, but this is a group that I fully expect us to be getting out of. Honestly, the Europa League this year, I expect us to go deep, if not all the way. That is my personal expectations. Things are definitely going to plan though so far in the Premier League this year. The big thing I'm happy about is the lack of draws. Only two draws 14 losses and we currently sit equal first with Chelsea in the Premier League title race. The goal this year though has to be top four football and Champions League qualification. We also top our Europa League group. It's all going well for Forest Green. Operation backup striker is not going to plan though. 97 weeks still for Francisco Santos and 35 weeks for Janssen. They're still not going to be high enough rated though to even be our backup. Might just have to keep the face with these lads. Although they are getting like 76, 75. It's not terrible. Terrible. We didn't win the league title. Man City just streaked away in the second half of the year, but I am relieved because we are playing Champions League football next year. Finally made it to the promised land and we're within touching distance of our goal. Scrolling down the table though and the relegation battle. It's Ev Everton finished dead last. That is embarrassing. We did add a community shield to our trophy cabinet. We beat Man City on penalties in the FA Cup final last year and we beat them in the community shield final on penalties. Newcastle United winning the FA Cup this year though. And we're gonna add a Carabao Cup to our trophy cabinet. We're only a Premier League title away from having all four English major trophies in our back pocket. Barcelona take down Chelsea to win the Champions League. Real Madrid have beaten Celtic on a penalty shootout to win the Europa League. We actually lost to Celtic in the quarterfinals. They went on absolute Cinderella run. Meanwhile, it's AC Milan beating Man United. That is a a very strong conference league final. And the lads have just taken another step up this season. Anwar Syed and Arthur Lancaster, both in the 90s, but both getting a ridiculous amount of goals. Carvalho, 14 assists. He's 93 overall at age 24. What a stud. Again, though, some more players I'm letting walk on freeze. I don't mind culling this squad a little bit. Luca Archer leaving and Gavin Gibbs also leaving. So a really fast season here in 2031, but that is because we've done what we need to do in my opinion. There's not much we need to do with this squad. We just need to start reaping the rewards of the squad we've built. And hopefully those rewards come next year in the Champions League. So here we are in season number 10 lads and your boys almost just had a mental breakdown. I made it through the entirety of this season. And let me tell you, this season was a grind only for my recording to crash. As you can see here, I've been recording for an, I was recording for an hour. I made it to the Champions League final and my game game decided to crash along with my stream labs and I lost the entire season. So I'm going to give you a recap of what happened this year before we get into the Champions League final. We did absolutely destroy the Premier League. We finished top of the league 15 points clear of Chelsea. I was really excited about that. We only had five losses all year, six draws, top of the league, 15 points clear. Amazing to see. The relegated sides this year were Burnley, Bournemouth and Norwich. Arsenal had an absolute stinker. Newcastle United won the FA Cup. Up. Tottenham won the Carabao Cup. We actually made it to the semi-finals where we lost to Liverpool on aggregate. Liverpool also won the Europa League. Atalanta took down Manchester United to win the Conference League. And we made it to the Champions League final. This is how it all went. We actually finished second in our group behind RB Leipzig. In the round of 16, we took down PSG in unbelievable circumstances. It was one all after the first leg and then we came away in the second.
second leg with a 1-0 win. I went on this massive spiel about how it was so important to finish first because Leipzig got to face Marseille and they ended up losing to Marseille. Quarterfinals though, we came from behind. I am so sad, arguably the most, that you guys didn't get to see this because we lost the first leg, I believe it was 3-2 to Barcelona. We went into the Camp Nou and beat them 2-1 in the 88th minute. So we made it to the semi-finals and that was one of the best comebacks and most satisfying results I've had all year in rebuild. So I'm a little salty we didn't get to show you that. Semi-finals, we took down Man City 4-3, which ultimately means we now have a Champions League final against Tottenham, which luckily I get to show you guys. I don't even know how that's going to go yet. That's still to be played. But this is how the team is looking this year after the whole year has gone past. We've had some absolute unreal growth. Our bench is just phenomenal and the reserves are just, they're rolling deep. And we had some players have some absolutely unbelievable seasons. Lancaster, 29 goals. Masado, 21. Said, 20 goals. Thorn, 16. Our attack and our team is just absolutely unbloody believable. I'm sorry about that, but it's now time to get back to the live action. Champions League final time against Tottenham. Look at that, lads. We get ourselves our own Tifo. I believe that's Olsen that has himself a Tifo. Very excited to use him in this final. Ferran Torres, he's got the pace on us. He puts nope. the long shot in, but Hobbs holds on to it. Well, one, but it goes right back there to Vlahovic. They square it. Oh my God. I'm not going to complain about that. They had about four better opportunities to shoot there. Olsen trying to get away from Bastoni. He has the pace. Oh, I've probably taken one too many touches there, man. They still got it here. They got the man out wide. Schneider with the shot. Another save from Hobbs. I see the overlapping run. We're going to top it on there to Olsen. It's a heavy touch, but Olsen green beams it. And that is a rocket from the Norwegian attacking midfielder. His striker days are showing off. That was an absolute rocket. Look at this on the replay. We put on an absolute platter for him. I could see the defense closing in. Nothing the keeper could have done about that one. That was a missile sent straight from North Korea. Said, he's gonna finesse it. Oh my God! Said's gonna find the top corner. That is unbelievable. The Moroccan winger has floated that one into the top corner. Maybe I should go for long shots more often in these finals. Look at that. The finesse. Keeper's planted himself at the front post and it has cost him dearly because we have hurled that one across into the back of the net. That was so satisfying to score. Forest Green only score bangers. Oh, what have I done there? It's a defensive misread and it's cost us terribly. Vlahovic has now given Tottenham away back into this game. They score an absolute banger of a long shot, but I've got to say that was all me. The poor pass and then my defending there I misread that one completely. What a finish steal though for Vlahovic. Hobbs off his line as well. I'm just passing it around. I don't care about pushing for a third. I want that full-time whistle to blow. And there it is, lads. The Forest Green Youth Academy rebuild has been completed. It has not been without its hiccups, but my God, we got there. What a journey it has been. It is going to be the Australian shot stopper Hobbs to lift the title for us. There we go, Forest Green Rovers, champions of Europe.